I'm Dr. Ajay Shah and this is another Facebook Live. I've been doing this Facebook Live every other day, every two, three days, once or twice a day. And uh, you know, I think while we go through this Corona infection, COVID-19, we have a lot of free time on our hand and we should take this time to grow. We should take, we should take this time actually to you know, advance ourselves. So today we are going Facebook Live with an important topic. But before I do that, uh, let me also tell you that uh, while you watch this video, Try to scroll through our page. We've been on this Facebook page for last uh, last almost three months, four months now, and we have recorded many useful videos. We have recorded many uh, useful information. We have a lot of good graphics, a lot of information. So if you scroll through our page, uh, watch the old videos. Many of them are gems actually, and you will learn a lot from it. So very important is scroll through our page and look at our old videos also. Uh, today's video is a very special topic. I call one of I call it one of the six pillars of healthy lifestyle. One of the six pillars of healthy lifestyle. Again, that pillar is a sleep. We take sleep pretty much granted. Uh, Thirty percent of Americans, matter of fact, don't get uh, uh, seven hours of sleep. The recommended number for sleep is seven to eight hours, and thirty percent of Americans don't get seven hours of sleep. Over the last 25, 30, 40 years, the number of hours American sleep has significantly gone down. Matter of fact, by almost by hour, hour and 15 minutes. So Americans are sleeping less. We always have considered sleep as not necessary. Sleep as something of a wasting of time, but that's not the case. Sleep is the one when our body recovers, when actually we heal, we grow. So sleep is very important. Matter of fact, 4% of Americans are on sleeping medicine. 4% of Americans are on sleeping medicine. Sleeping medicine has shown to uh, cause increased mortality. People who take regular sleep medicines don't live long. So taking sleep medicine is not the answer. Uh, also, some people think that they can sleep less during the weekdays and sleep more on the weekends. That never works. You cannot overcome sleep death. You have to have a fixed sleep hours. So what are the, some of the uh, ill effects of poor sleep? Uh, definitely poor sleep leads to poor learning, poor uh, creativity, poor productivity. Uh, sleep also, sleepless, uh, uh, sleepless nights also are, people are more prone to accidents. You must have gone through a, a night where you did not sleep and next day when you were driving, you were not very alert, very oriented. Sleep. Uh, poor sleep also can cause pre-diabetes and diabetes. Poor, poor sleep also can cause high blood pressure. Matter of fact, people who have poor sleep, sleep less than 5-6 hours, have shown to cause increased mortality. People also who work night shifts also typically are overweight, obese, they, they eat more and they actually live less. Uh, sleep also now has shown to cause higher incidence of Alzheimer's disease. People who sleep poorly have a very high chance of dementia and Alzheimer's disease. Matter of fact, now we also know that people who have poor sleep are more prone to have heart attack and heart disease. So again, a poor sleep can lead to many issues, including living less, including many health conditions. So it's very important we maintain good sleep. So again, taking sleeping, sleeping medicine is not the answer. So how can we improve sleep? I have uh, compiled uh, some 15 or 20 techniques and I can pretty much assure you, I can pretty much guarantee you that if you employ some of these techniques, your sleep will better, your sleep will get better from tonight. I can guarantee you that. And the reason I say that because I have employed some of those techniques myself and my sleep now is like a baby now actually. I sleep deep seven to eight hours and I'll tell you how I track it. 10 years ago, my sleep used to be very poor. I used to sleep two, three hours. I sometimes would take a sleeping medicine and sleep, my sleep was very poor. Now my sleep, matter of fact, is perfect. And I enjoy all the great benefits of sleeping uh, very nicely. So I'll tell you all the things what I do. Uh, number one, the most important thing is maintain fixed sleep hours. So if you sleep 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., maintain those hours, including on the weekend. So go to sleep same time and wake up at the same time, seven days a week. If you have one evening where you stay up late with friends, with a party going out, that's a different story. But you cannot make a habit of having a different sleep hours every evening, every night. So have a fixed sleep hours. Number two, which is very important, is exposing yourself to sunlight for 30 minutes in the morning. So every morning, if possible, I will sit down or walk in the sunlight. 
If you are not able to go in the sun or if there is not enough sun, like for example in the winter months in Michigan, then you can actually buy 10,000 Lux light, keep it in your kitchen while you're having a tea or coffee in the morning, sit in that 10,000 Lux light for about 15 to 30 minutes. Exposing yourself to sunlight or 10,000 Lux light has shown to increase the benefit, particularly deep sleep. So expose yourself to the light. Third thing which is very important, many people don't realize that regular exercise promotes sleep. So have a minimum of 30 minutes of exercise every day, preferably before 7 p.m. Before 7 p.m. If you exercise an hour, I can guarantee you your sleep will be a lot better. I exercise every day one to two hours and partly my sleep has improved significantly is because of my regular exercise. Obviously I'm tired, I'm ready for, a, I'm ready for some recovery and I fall asleep within five minutes once I go to bed. Next thing, next thing is uh, no caffeine after 2 p.m. No caffeine after 2 p.m. But if you have poor sleep, try co no coffee after uh, 2 p.m. If you are very sensitive to caffeine, I would avoid caffeine completely, particularly if you are having sleep difficulty in sleeping. So no coffee is best if you are having difficulty in sleeping. Next thing is no heavy meal after 7 p.m. No heavy meal after 7 p.m. Heavy meal actually makes poor sleep, it lowers your deep sleep, so no heavy meal after 7 p.m. Definitely not eating at 10 p.m. with a heavy meal. Um, uh, next thing is uh, no alcohol after 7 p.m. Alcohol can put you to sleep, but that sleep is a very poor quality sleep, so definitely no alcohol after 7 p.m. Ideal thing is uh, avoiding alcohol completely if you can. Uh, next thing is uh, taking a hot shower before you go to sleep. Hot shower lowers your core body temperature and that actually will put you to sleep very quickly and maintains a good sleep. So hot shower uh, before you go to sleep. The next thing is maintaining bedroom temperature to 66 degree. Maintaining bedroom temperature to 66 degree. Keeping the bedroom cool actually lowers your core body temperature and gives you better sleep and uninterrupted sleep. Next, next thing you can also do to lower the core body temperature is wearing minimum clothes at night and having minimum uh, bed sheets and comforters at night. So again, try to lower the core body temperature by wearing minimum clothes, keeping the bedroom temperature low and taking a hard shower before you go to sleep. Next thing you can do is uh, minimize blue light exposure. Blue light typically comes out of cell phones, iPads, TV. So try to uh, have a minimum blue light exposure particularly after 7 p.m. So after 7 p.m. try to try to not use iPhone, iPad, TV as much as you can. If you absolutely have to use it, install a blue blocker device on your phone, on your iPad, and that will filter out the blue light and that will help you to go to sleep and maintain a deep sleep. Now, next thing is, uh, give me one second. Next thing is starting to dim, dim the light in the house after 7 p.m. Just like our ancestors, when the sundown happened, they start to get less active and eventually they, they fell asleep. Same way in our own house, we try to dim the lights after 7 or 8 p.m. and try to create an atmosphere as if it used to be two, three, four hundred years ago. So try to dim the lights in your house. Um, if you cannot fall asleep after you go to bed in half an hour, try to get up, read a, read a uh, comfortable book or do, do some meditation and go back to sleep. Just don't stay in the bed away. Uh, definitely no TV in the bedroom. We used to have a fashion 10 years ago that every kid, every person in the house, every bedroom must have TV. Those days are gone. Actually, in my opinion, TV in the bedroom is absolutely not necessary and should not be there. Now, obviously keep your bedroom as dark as possible and maintain noise-free bedroom as much as possible. Uh, definitely doing a regular meditation once or twice a day, not only will help to put sleep right away, but also will maintain deep sleep. Regular meditation also lowers the stress and many times stress is the reason people don't have good sleep. Uh, definitely, uh, if you have a, a life partner, if you, are, if you are married, definitely uh, sex will help you to fall, fall asleep and maintain a sleep. Uh, definitely have a comfortable mattress and pillow. It's work to invest into a comfortable mattress and pillow to have a good sleep. Uh, definitely lower your water intake after 7 p.m. so you don't have to wake up at 2 in the morning to go to urinate and bathroom so that way it doesn't interrupt your sleep. Um, also, uh, before you go to sleep at night, urinate so that way you don't have to wake up at night. 
Uh, all those th things are definitely something you can try. Those are obviously at no cost, they're free. They're just a matter of trying. I have tried them, my sleep is great now. At the same time, until you know how your sleep is, you will not be able to uh, know what other things you need to do. And that's where sleep tracking becomes very important, sleep tracking. I track my sleep with a Fitbit device. There are many other devices available. Matter of fact, Fitbit now has a sale, only like 50 or $60. It can track your sleep, it can track your steps, it can track how many flights, how many floors you take. It can track many good parameters. So owning a Fitbit type device is must in my opinion, it will track your sleep. Matter of fact, I've tracked my sleep for last three years. 2018, I slept six hour, 40 minutes, slap. In bed probably was about eight hours. In 2019, I slept seven hours, two minutes, and probably in bed time was about eight hours. So I definitely maintain more than seven hours of sleep, not just, uh, in, uh, not, just, not just in bed, but sleep time itself. The sleep itself was seven hours and two minutes. My goal for 2020 is seven hours, 30 minutes of sleep, and in bed time of about eight to eight and a half hours. I work full time, I commute two hours, and I still manage to find time to sleep. And the reason is I take sleep as seriously as healthy eating, as seriously as exercising, as seriously as relationship, as seriously as anything else in life. So again, sleep is one of the important pillar, one of the six pillars in healthy lifestyle. Sleep should be taken very seriously. Sleep should be uh, followed regularly and uh, uh, do everything in your power to get a better sleep. If you employ all those techniques I just gave you, I can guarantee you, I can assure you that your sleep will be better. So try them, comment, uh, please watch videos, please watch our old videos. And if, you, if your sleep improves, please come back and comment on this video. Please share this video if you think it will be useful to your friends and family. Thank you.